Have you ever wondered how weapons would look like if they were combined together? Well, in this video, I installed a mod that can do just that. I'll be trying to beat Terraria using bows only. Just how will these combined weapons look like, and will they be strong enough to defeat the final boss Moonlord? Stay tuned, because you're about to find out. Alright, let's begin. The first bow that I'll be making is called the Treasure. And to make this bow, I'll have to gather all 8 bows from copper all the way to platinum. I do have a mod that allows me to craft the equivalent ore, so making this bow is possible. Let's start by collecting some wood, and then make my way into a cave to mine the ores. Okay, that's enough wood for now. Okay, found a cave. There's not much here except some copper. Let's head back up and try to find another cave. Okay, found an ice cave. Found my first life crystal. That should be enough tungsten now. That should be enough gold. And I found another life crystal and ice chest. Okay, the ice mirror. Suspicious looking eye and a gravitation potion. Ooh, blizzard in a bottle. Oh my god, there's so much loot down here. I think I might stay here for a while. Okay, that's enough emeralds for a hook. Alright, that should be enough ores collected. Let's head back home and craft the bows. Okay, let's first craft the emerald hook. And now the bows. Copper, lead, tungsten, and gold. Then let's convert these bars into the other equivalent. So let's make seven of each bar. Now I can craft tin, iron, silver, and platinum. Now having all eight bows, let's head over to a demon altar to craft the treasure. All right, here we go. Now I can craft the treasure. It has 33 range damage, 19% critical strike chance, and the chance of a critical attack is slightly increased. Let's test this bow out against the Eater of Souls. Three, two, one. Ooh! The velocity and speed is definitely way higher compared to the regular bows. It is also currently nighttime, so I'm building an arena to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. I know I only have 180 health at the moment, but I think it's doable. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. Coming from the left side. Okay. Ooh, 74 damage when it crits. This bow is actually pretty strong. Second phase already. Oh god. Okay, it's gonna start dashing now. Let's heal up. Switch over to my Frostburn arrows. Oh god, there we go. That was a bit scary. But now, I have the Shield of Cthulhu. Let's build some NPC houses now, so that I can get the merchant in, to buy some more arrows. But while I wait for the merchant to spawn, I'm gonna go to the jungle and try to find some more accessories and life crystals. Okay, never mind, he just arrived. Let's buy a whole bunch of arrows. There we go. And you know what? Instead, I'm gonna go to the underground desert biome to gather some fossils for the fossil armor, since that armor set increases range damage. Ooh, and the traveling merchant has arrived. Gonna have to check out what he's selling later on. Okay, found a chest and an extractinator. Okay, there we go. Dune Rider boots. And here's the last life crystal for max health. Oh wait, it's already nighttime? Damn, okay, I missed out on the traveling merchant, but that's okay. That should be enough desert fossils for now. 1,500. It's time to extract them all now. Okay, all done. Let's craft the full fossil armor. There we go. So in total, it gives 8% increased range critical strike chance, 
5% increased range damage, and the set bonus gives 20% chance to save ammo. Let's also make the gold pickaxe. Let's head into the corruption now to take on the Eater of Worlds. Let's first build an arena. Okay, all done. And now let's break some shadow orbs. All right, here we go. And let's switch over to my Jester Eros because of its piercing abilities. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. I should definitely try to angle myself better like this. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's so satisfying. One more little chunk left. And you're done. Now that I have some shadow skills and demonite bars, I can craft the nightmare pickaxe. And I am going to craft the demon bow as well as the Tendon Bow, because with these two and the Molten Fury, I'll be able to craft the Cursed Dragon. So let's begin mining down to hell for some Hellstone. Okay, finally made it down to hell. And let's see if I can try to find an Obsidian Skin Potion, just so that I can help me mine the Hellstone a lot easier. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's more than enough Hellstone, basically 400. Let's make the Molten Pickaxe, and then the Molten Fury. Let's head over to a Demon Altar to combine them. Here we go. The Cursed Dragon. 36 range damage, 16% critical strike chance, turns wooden arrows into Hellfire arrows. Now I do lose out on 11% critical strike chance, but I think the Hellfire arrows will make up for it. Let's test this weapon out against Geltron. Okay, arena is all complete. Let's talk to the old man to summon the boss. Three, two, one. Get up. Okay, here we go. Fire rate is pretty good. That's one hand down. And that's two. Just the head now. Almost done here. 500 more health. There we go. Skeletron has been defeated. Now, there are only two things that I'll be looking for inside the dungeon. One is the Shadow Key, and the second is the Cobalt Shield. There's the Shadow Key. And there's the Cobalt Shield. Before I go down to hell again to take on the Wall of Flesh, I'm going to drink a Gravitation Potion to get the Shiny Red Balloon and Lucky Horseshoe. Then afterwards, I'll be farming Goblin Scouts for their Tattered Cloths to summon the Goblin Army. Here's the Lucky Horseshoe. And here's the Shiny Red Balloon. Okay, that's enough Tattered Cloths. Let's go ahead and summon the Army. Okay, Goblin Army has been defeated. Let's go search for the Goblin Tinkerer now. Oh, there he is. Let's purchase the Rocket Boots and Workshop. And now let's start combining some accessories. First up, Spectre Boots. And then... The White Horseshoe Balloon. And finally, the Obsidian Shield. Let's also reforge my Cursed Dragon. Okay, I'll take the Monic. Now I'm all set to take on the Wall of Flesh. Okay, made it to the end of the world. Let's toss in the Voodoo Doll to summon the boss. Here we go. Okay, my Hellfire arrows are not getting to the actual boss. So let's switch it up to the Jester arrows. Yeah, these are way better. Less than 50% health now. 
thousand more health. And the wall of flesh has been defeated. That wasn't too bad. Let's open up the treasure bag. And unfortunately, no ranger emblem. But now that I'm in hard mode, let's go to the corruption again to break some demon altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. Okay, we've got cobalt, or calcum, and adamantite. That's enough cobalt. Onto the ore calcum. That's enough ore calcum. And lastly, let's go mine the adamantite. Ooh, the magic quiver. That's going to be really useful. Increases arrow damage by 10% and greatly increases arrow speed. And also gives 20% chance not to consume arrows. Alright, and that should be enough adamantite. 404. Let's first make the adamantite armor. Next, I'll be making another bow. And that bow is the calcium. So, I'm going to need the marrow and the bee's knees. Oh, there it is. Ooh, and we got deadly on it. I guess I can use this for now. Let's go get the bee's knees next. Okay, found the beehive. And let's just start it up. Almost done here. Alright. Hopefully the bee's knees is in this treasure bag. Oh yeah, there it is. To the demon altar I go. Let's go ahead and craft the calcium. 42 range damage, 24% critical strike chance. Uses 3 mana. Okay, now that's different. Shoots bone arrows, additionally releasing bees in different directions. Requires mana instead of arrows. Let's see. Oh! That's a lot of bees. And I'm out of mana. Okay. The bees are very weak though. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this weapon. Honestly, I think I would have preferred just the marrow by itself. The next bow that I'll be making is the Infernal Invention. So this does require the Hellwing Bow, which I will go get in some shadow chests. As well as the Blood Rain Bow. But I'm pretty sure this can only be obtained during the Blood Moon, so I'm going to have to wait for that. But to speed things up a little, I'm going to sleep on my bed to accelerate time. Okay, finally, the Blood Moon. That took a while. Let's make the reinforced fishing pole. And then let's take out our can of worms. Use as bait. Ooh, okay. Increased chance to fish up enemies during a blood moon. There it is. Let's go down to hell to get the Helling bow now. There it is. And now I can craft the infernal invention. 35 range damage, 21% critical strike chance, uses 3 mana, shoots a rain of fireballs from the sky. Ooh, got godly on it. Let's go up to the surface and test it out. Okay, 3, 2, 1. Damn! I'm definitely gonna have to increase my maximum mana now. It's also a bit unfortunate that I won't be able to use this bow anymore. Because now I can craft the 10th element. So this requires the Infernal Invention, Cursed Dragon, and Calcium to make. It has 60 range damage, shoots elemental arrows that reduce the armor of opponents by 40. Now that's a lot. So right now I have 41 defense. Imagine if I shot this at myself. I would only have one defense. So that means I basically am taking 100% of the damage from enemies. Let's craft it. Ooh, sighted. Here we go. Three, two, one. 
it's not that bad. I was expecting a little bit more. And I really thought that these arrows would be able to go through blocks, but I guess not. The fire rate is good though. Let's farm some wyverns now for the souls of flight so that I can craft myself a pair of wings. I also didn't really catch this on at the start, but I just realized these arrows can actually penetrate. So this bow would be really good up against the destroyer. Okay, that's enough souls of flight. And that's enough feathers. Now I can craft angel wings. I should be good to take on the mechanical bosses now, so let's wait until nighttime to summon them. Let's also use 3,996 wooden arrows to craft the endless quiver. And now I won't have to worry about running out of ammo ever again. It's also nighttime now, so the first mechanical boss that I'll be fighting is going to be the destroyer. Three, two, one. Go, go, go. Oh god. Okay, I wasn't able to hit the clumped up part, but that's okay. It just means that it's going to take a little longer to defeat. Okay, it's at 10,000 health now. Damn, this thing is strong. I kind of underestimated this bow. Next up, the twins. Now this is for sure going to take way longer compared to the destroyer. Second phase for the spasmatasm. Okay, Spasmantasm is down. Just the Retinator now. Second phase, here we go. Okay, all done. Ooh, and we got low key sets. Warding on the wings too. And lastly, Skeletron Prime. Okay, all three mechanical bosses have been defeated. Now with all three souls and hollowed bars, I'm going to use it to craft the pickaxe axe, as well as the full hollowed armor sets. No point in keeping the adamantite armor because the set bonus doesn't even affect me anymore. Let's head into the jungle now to try to find the plantera bulb and to mine some chlorophyte ore. Okay, that should be enough chlorophyte ore. Haven't found the plantera bulb just yet, but I'll find out later on. For now, I'm going to make another bow. This bow is called the Monday Music, and it requires all eight repeaters. Cobalt, or calcum, adamantite, and then let's convert them. Palladium, mithril, and titanium. And then with the hollowed bars, I'm gonna make the hollowed repeater. Same with the chlorophyte bars, I'm going to make the Chlorophyte Shop Bow. And that should be everything. Let's head over to a Demon Altar again. Alright, let's make it. So, this weapon has 134 range damage, 35% critical strike chance. The chance of a critical attack is well increased. Fires 3 arrows. Let's see how it looks like. 3, 2, 1. Okay, just basic wooden arrows. Nothing too special, but this bow is more of a shotgun, so landing all three arrows at the same time is going to deal a lot of damage. Let's reforge it. 
There we go. Unreal. Oh my god. Let's go find the Plantera bulb now. Oh, is that the Plantera bulb down there? Yes, it is. Let's build an arena right here then. Ooh, skeleton merchant. Oh, he's selling the egglets. And I have the anklet of the wind. Which means I'll be able to craft lightning boots. Let's do it. There we go. Okay, the arena is all complete. Let's go ahead and break the bulb to summon Plantera. Three, two, one. Here we go. First phase, let's just fly all around it. Just in circles. Okay, second phase already. Wow, that was fast. Ten thousand more health, and all done. Holy! Okay, now that was easy. Let's head into the temple now to take on Golem. Okay, the arena is all set up. Let's summon the boss. Head is down. Honestly, I could just kill the body without killing its fists. There we go. Alright, time for a new bow, which is called the True Forest. I'm going to need all types of wood bows, along with 50 spooky wood and 50 dynasty wood. So whenever night arrives, I'm going to summon the pumpkin moon, and for the dynasty wood, well, I'm just going to have to get lucky and wait for the Traveling Merchant. Okay, it is officially nighttime. Let's summon the Pumpkin Moon. Okay, that should be enough spooky wood. 122. And now let's collect all the other types of wood. Got the Ash Wood. The Boreal Wood. The Pearl Wood. The ebon wood and the palm wood. Okay, let's craft the bows. Wooden bow, boreal wood bow, palm wood bow, rich mahogany, ebon wood, pearl wood bow, and the ash wood bow. Then converting the ebon wood to shade wood, I can make the shade wood bow. That should be everything, and all I need now is the Dynasty Wood. Oh, speak of the devil. Traveling Merchant has arrived. Oh my god, no way! He's actually selling the Dynasty Wood. Let's purchase 50 then. And now, I can make the True Forest. 52 range damage, 21% critical strike chance. Shoots 3 arrows, spending only 1. Obviously, this isn't good, but it can be used to craft a better one. So, with the Monday music, treasure, and true forest, I can use them to craft the matter. This weapon has 151 range damage, 45% critical strike chance, quickly fires three projectiles, shoots matter arrows with high speed and knockback. Oh, look at this bow! It is pure black. Let's see how it looks like. Three, two, one. Woo! Even the arrows are black. Okay, I have to reforge this. Come on, give me Unreal. There we go. Damn! 173 damage now and 50% critical strike chance. Let's summon the Solar Eclipse now because I'm going to need the Ancient Broken Bow, and with the Eventide from the Empress of Light, I'll be able to craft the Sky Rider. Here we go. Okay, well, I made a huge mistake. This Ancient Broken Bow is actually dropped from the Paladin in the dungeon. So let's head over there instead. There we go. Oh my god, this thing's massive. <laughs> I was not expecting that. 
Oh, let's go get a prismatic lacewing. Oh, there it is. All right, let's kill it to summon the Empress of Light. Oh my god, and another one. Give me that, just in case if I fail. Okay. Fifty percent health now. And now it's second phase. Okay, it holds close. Come on. There we go. Now, is the Eventide in this treasure bag? Oh, yeah. And combining it with the Magic Quiver. That is really fast. Okay, back at the Demon Altar. So, combining the Eventide and the Ancient Broken Bow, I can now craft the Skyrider. Now, this bow has a whopping 244 range damage, 23% critical strike chance. Shoots bursts of three elemental arrows, which can cause debuffs. Frostburn, Poisoned, and Confused. They bounce once in a random direction, and the arrows pass through the tiles. Ooh, sighted on it. This bow has almost 300 damage now. Let's now test this bow out against this dummy. Three, two, one. That's a lot of damage. Especially when it crits too. Alright, time to take on the Lunatic Cultist. Here we go. Ten thousand more health. Okay, all done. All right, let's go take care of the four celestial pillars. So the pillar is down. Trowley Merchant has arrived again. And he is selling. Oh, the pulse bow. I'll buy that. It is a material. And combining it with the tsunami, I'll be able to craft the extra bow. Let's actually hold off on destroying the three remaining Celestial Pillars. And instead, I'm going to take on Duke Fishron. Ooh, there's two Truffle Worms. I think that's enough for now. Here we go. Second phase. And the last phase. Okay, that wasn't so bad. And there's the Tsunami. Let's quickly make the extra. And then teleport. Okay, this bow has 191 range damage. 19% critical strike chance. Quickly fires 7 pulsating projectiles. Let's see. Oh my god. Now, if these projectiles can pierce... This is going to be one hell of a weapon. Now, I am going to hold off on destroying the three Celestial Pillars. Instead, I'm going to summon the Old One's army in order to craft the Dawn Bow. So, I'm going to need the Phantom Phoenix 
and the Aerial Bane, combined with the Daedalus Stormbow to craft it. And yes, the projectiles do pierce. Oh, there is the Phantom Phoenix Bow. And here is the last wave. Come on! Oh, I made it just in time. Oh my god, that was so close. Now, I am praying that I get the Aerial Bane. Three, two, one. Yes, let's go! And there's the Daedalus Stormbow. Okay, let's craft the Dawn. 114 range damage, uses one mana, shoots a rain of Betsy arrows from the sky. Oh! Let's test this bow out against this dummy. Huh? Wait, okay, okay. So, whenever my arrows make contact with an enemy, it spreads. And it kind of makes this umbrella effect. That's pretty cool. I know I have gotten a lot of defender medals. 400 to be exact. So, that is enough to get myself a new armor set. And the armor set that I'll be going for is the Red Riding. Perfect. There's just two more bows for me to get before I take on Moonlord. And they are the Phantasm and Dark Winter. Let's go for the Dark Winter first. So I'm going to need to summon the Goblin Army again to get the Shadow Flame Bow. And I'm going to have to find some Ice Nimics in the Ice Biome for the Ice Bow. Okay, there's the Ice Bow. And... That's enough tattered cloths. Let's summon the goblin army one last time. Okay, there's the shadow flame bow. Let's craft the dark winter. And see how it looks like. Yep, just as expected. 62 range damage, shoots ice arrows, additionally releasing two arrows of shadow flame. Now let's go take care of the Vortex Pillar for the Phantasm. Okay, there goes the Vortex Pillar. Phantasm made. Okay, now it's time to craft this monster of a bow. Conqueror of the Stars. 358 range damage, 28% critical strike chance. Shoots bursts of 4 elemental arrows which can cause debuffs. Frostburn, Poisoned, Confused, Shadowflame, Bessie's Curse, on fire. They bounce once in a random direction and they can pass through tiles. Oh, I've got deadly on it. Here we go. Okay. This weapon is a lot like the Skyrider, but obviously with more damage, more arrows, and more debuffs. All right, let's go take care of the last two remaining pillars. Nebula Pillar has been destroyed. One more to go. And there goes the last pillar. Time for Moonlord. There we go. For now, oh my god, okay, that was bad. Come on, kill it. Yes, kill up. Teleport again. Just one more hand to go. Okay, just the core now. Ten thousand more health. Come on. 
Oh, we're good. Let's go. And now that I have some Luminite Bars, I'm able to craft the Awakened. Oh my god. 438 damage. Shoots bursts of four different lunar arrows which can explode, shoot a deadly beam, release homing projectiles of fire and magic missile. And of course, the arrows can pass through tiles. Let's do it. Oh! <laughs> and I got unreal on this thing. Oh my, it is shaking. What is that? Okay. I'm super excited to try this out. Let's test it out on the dummy first. Three, two, one. Oh! That is crazy. I'm dealing... Those are 1,000 damage crit hits. I have to fight Moonlord one more time with this thing. Come on, let's go. Let's see how fast I can take this boss down. Oh, it's getting shredded. That's one hand down already. Holy crap. That's two. One eye open up. There we go. Okay, core time. Jesus Christ. This bow is insane. Alright, that's all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you guys want to try this mod out for yourselves, I'll leave all the mods I've used in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace!